Let's talk about some of my favorite or least favorite gun myths from the movies. But first, I'll let you know we have a gun giveaway going on. It's happening right now. It's absolutely free, but it ends really soon. All you need to do is click on the link down below to learn which brand new gun you could win. Gun myths in the movies. You've heard me say it a couple of times on video over the last 10 years that it's not like the movies. And those are the things that really, really get me going. That a lot of people in Hollywood are anti-gun, but they want to use guns in their movies to make a gigantic dramatic statement. And they use them so poorly. They are portrayed so poorly in the movies that people who are in the gun industry or even just really, really interested in firearms will watch a movie and be like, oh my God, I can't believe that. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger breaking into a gun shop and stealing a rocket launcher. That just doesn't happen. And, and gun shops are just notoriously poorly laid out. I'll use Arnold again um, in Terminator when he walks in and the shop owner hands him a shotgun and there are boxes of ammunition right there on the counter for him to grab shells out and load the shotgun and shoot the shop owner. That kind of stuff never happens. And it's just, it's the simple thing that, that I'm sure the director thought was really, really cool. Another thing that just bugs the crap out of me is somebody holding a revolver, a double action revolver, like a Smith & Wesson Model 10 or a snub nose, and they open the cylinder and spin it and you hear clicking. They do that with the Foley noises and they put the clicking in there. Those guns don't click when you spin the cylinder. That, that's not it. A single action army revolver will click when you put it in half cock and spin the cylinder. Um, but seriously, they get things really, really wrong. Another thing, is what happens when bullets hit bodies. We've got the complete gamut of what happens when bullets hit bodies. If you're watching a movie, you would think that a 12 gauge shotgun is going to blow a full grown man right off his feet. Well, let's talk about the physics of things here. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Remember that law from high school? So if you're shooting someone with a shotgun and that person goes flying backwards from the impact of the shotgun shells, you're going to go flying backwards when you shoot that gun because equal and opposite reaction. That's what we feel is recoil from the firearm and then the, the pressure going forward, the launch velocity of the material. So think about that when you're, when you're watching a movie and someone gets shot and goes flying or when someone gets shot and then they just jump right back into action. And all over the movies, from John Wayne onward, people are getting shot in the shoulder and it's like, no big deal. Understand that if you get shot in the shoulder, there's a lot going on up here that probably will mess you up for life. That shoulder joint is going to be destroyed. All of the ligaments and tendons and muscles are gonna to have to be woven back together and rebuilt. You're not going to be using that arm for much of anything for quite a long time. And this actually flows through on some of the training that we're taught to do that in the police academy, I was taught that, you know, we're going to pretend that your arm is injured, so you gotta hold it up here and put it across your chest and, and fire with your weak hand. Stop and think for a minute. If you're shot in the upper arm, your bicep is not going to lift this arm up. I've been to training schools where, yes, we're gonna pretend you're shot in the arm, Make sure you drop your arm down to your side and let it hang limp because that's what it's going to do. You're not going to be able to move it. So this idea that somebody shot in the shoulder then climbs up the side of a building, that is completely bogus. On the other side of this thing, I really like one movie in particular, The Way of the Gun. Man, they use firearms properly in that gun and one of my least favorite actresses of all times, Sarah Silverman gets punched in the face right in the opening scene. So I really, really enjoy watching that movie. But th that's neither here nor there. The Way of the Gun is, is a, a movie where people actually have to reload firearms malfunction. They have all sorts of problems with their guns. They're, they're shooting people and they're not falling down immediately and things like that. It's one of those things where the more you learn about guns, the less you like about movies. I'm so sick and tired of people hiding behind car doors and thinking they're going to stop bullets. We've shot so many car doors doing so many tests that 
yeah, there are some places inside a car where there's some supporting material that might stop a bullet, but I'm not going to count on that. A car door is concealment. It is not cover. I, I want to be behind the engine block. I want to be behind a concrete planter filled with dirt. That's what I'm looking for that's going to stop bullets. Certainly not a car door. There was a Dirty Harry movie where, thank goodness, Clint Eastwood shot a guy right through the wall. We understand that it was on an airplane. Airplane walls are really thin. He shot right through the door or the wall there by the bathroom and, and killed him with his gigantic 44 Magnum. Again, the most powerful handgun in the world. Yeah, okay, so at the end of that movie, he shoots the guy and he goes flying backwards into the water. Nope, doesn't happen like that. So when you're watching movies, just take your time and stop and think, you know what, they're doing this for dramatic effect. They're trying to trick you. The suspension of disbelief is what makes movies work for people. So you're watching what they're doing with guns. They're certainly not doing it safely. It's certainly not the, the proper physics of what's happening with a firearm. And the end result of terminal ballistics are never accurately portrayed. Those things really kind of make me mad when I'm watching movies. So, you know, don't hang out with me. No Netflix and chill at my place because I will be complaining about the way guns are presented. Want to know the three biggest mistakes when carrying a handgun? Then click on the video next to me to reveal all three mistakes. Mistake number two may shock you. Everybody has their own cardinal rules for what they're gonna do when they're carrying a gun, but right now, I'm gonna give you three things that you must never do 